other attributes of RAM that are important to understand, especially when we're doing an install or we're t trying to select the correct type of RAM for a particular computer, is DIMM versus SIM. SIM actually stands for Single Inline Memory Module, while DIMM stands for Dual Inline Memory Module. So what does that mean for us? Well, SIM actually refers to a s memory module, or a memory stick rather, that has a single group of memory that can be independently accessed. So it's one group of memory that can we can independently access at one time. Now, SIM, even though it's one group, may sometimes have two pin or two sets of pins. Um, both sides of the card have pins on either side, and this isn't because it's um, this isn't because it's like DIM where it can be accessed independently, but it's actually a dual-sided SIM. It's one group of independently accessed memory, but they're connected together uh, to sort of simulate working as two groups. Uh, DIM, the dual inline memory module, is actually two groups of memory that can be accessed independently. Uh, they're double-sided and each side can be accessed independently. It's an independent uh, rank of memory. So between the two, we'll definitely say, we definitely know that DIM is the newer version. It's the latest and greatest between SIM and DIM. And when we're talking about new computers and new RAM, what we'll see on the newer modules now is the DIM, the dual inline memory module. And we'll see it as DDR, DDR2, and DDR3 will uh, all be the DIM type modules. Now, when we're picking our RAM, there's a lot to consider. We've talked about DDR, DDR2, DDR3, and SIM and DIM, and there's also the clock speeds of our motherboard as well as the different banks of memory that we have on our computer. Memory manufacturer websites uh, that we can go to to buy more memory, such as a uh, Kingston memory, or if we go to different memory webs uh, memory purchasing websites, they actually come with utilities that will allow us to search by our computer make and model as well as our motherboard make and model in order to, to determine the exact best type of memory for our computer. It's a lot easier than looking through uh, the pages of our motherboard uh, instruction guides and determining the exact specifications of our motherboard memory capacity and searching that versus the different mem memory manufacturers rather than just going to the manufacturers and using their tools that they have available already. So we want to go online and we want to check by either our computer or our motherboard in order to determine the best memory. And we also want to check the RAM speed. Uh, and the RAM speed is either going to be in nanoseconds or it's going to be in throughput. Now again, by using the online tools, these will automatically match up. Uh, with our motherboard or our computer type. But if we're doing our own research, then we want to make sure as best we can that the RAM speed matches up with the motherboard uh, speed for RAM. Uh, newer motherboards are a little bit more flexible as far as if they can handle RAM that's not their exact same speed. But having RAM that's the exact speed definitely results in a lot better performance and it's a lot more stable. When selecting memory for your motherboard, you'll notice that your computer memory comes in banks. Fortunately for us, a lot of times the banks are color-coded. On this particular motherboard, you'll notice that we have latches that are white and latches that are black. The two white latches are considered one memory bank and the two black latches are considered another memory bank. When we want to install memory on this motherboard, we want to install memory in pairs. If we have a motherboard where it has two sections of three bank memory, then we want to install the memory in sticks of three. We want to make sure that we install the memory as best we can in groups and that we match the groups up uh, with the different banks. So we go online, we enter our computer manufacturer, or if we bought this motherboard separately, we can enter this motherboard information and we find out the best type of memory for this motherboard. We'll want to buy two sticks and place them in corresponding memory banks. So we'll want to either fill up both the white slots or both of the black slots. And that will allow us the best computer performance using that RAM. When you're selecting RAM, you always want to 
check out your manufacturer's specifications by using the website tools that you can normally find on most uh, memory manufacturers' websites. You want to make sure that you determine your motherboard's maximum amount of RAM because just because we can buy four 16 gigabit sticks of RAM doesn't mean our motherboard will be able to handle it. We definitely want to check out its maximum uh, threshold for the amount of memory that it can handle. And we want to, of course, check what type of memory we have in there now. Uh, because if we have, say, if we already have two four gigabit sticks, um, we don't want to buy just one 16 gigabit stick to bring, uh, bring up our memory. Um, we want to make sure that we try to install memory in pairs as best as we can. So, say, two two gigabit sticks rather than one two gigabit stick and one four gigabit stick because the clock timings on those two sticks will throw off the computer, um, especially if you only install one of those or they're dramatically different. So we want to make sure that we try best to install them in pairs. And keeping all this in mind, we should be able to install our memory correctly and we should be able to have good computer performance and speed up our computer with more memory.